Good day to you and welcome to another Paddox Club video tutorial. I want to talk about Prescribed Management Rule 27. It's the one-headed signing of instruments and I want to consider its application to minutes of meetings and to EFTs, electronic fund payments made online. PMR 27 reads, no document signed on behalf of a body corporate should be valid and binding unless it's signed by a trustee and the managing agent referred to in Rule 46 or by two trustees, or in the case of a certificate issued in terms of 15B31AA of the Act, by two trustees or the managing agent. So levy clearance certificates can be signed either by two trustees or by the managing agent alone, whereas any other document which is signed on behalf of the body corporate must be signed either by a trustee and the managing agent or by two trustees. Now, in his book, Sectional Titles, Professor Corny Funder Mabber refers to this as the Four Eyes Principle, and says that it avoids abuse by a single trustee who might sign a document to the detriment of the body corporate. If one applies this to minutes, you then come to the conclusion that a set of minutes must be signed by two trustees or one trustee and the managing agent, and that is in fact Corny van Merva's conclusion. But I'd respectfully disagree. I don't think that the chairman's signature of a confirmation is in fact the signature of a document that binds the body corporate. It is simply a confirmation that a resolution was taken in that form that gives rise to a presumption which can be rebutted in court if necessary that the body corporate decided that that meeting to take a resolution in that form. It's a piece of paper admittedly but I don't think it's a document signed on behalf of the body corporate for the purposes of PMR 27. So in my view the normal practice of just one person, the chairperson, signing the minutes is okay. It's legally defensible. Let's move on to electronic fund payments, EFTs. Now obviously we know that this rule was drafted in the 1970s before the internet came into play. So clearly the draftsperson didn't have this type of transaction in mind. But the question is, does the rule apply? Do you have to get a managing agent and a trustee or two trustees both to participate in the process? Now we know that in most managing agencies, there's one person, often in their accounts department, who loads the payments, and another person, normally the portfolio manager, who releases it. So the trustees aren't involved at all. But whether in the context of, uh, of a managed agency or in self-managed schemes, in practice, one person gets the one-time password, clicks the button, and makes the actual payment. So the question is, is this a breach of prescribed management rule 27? Should people be arranging with the bank for two separate one-time passwords to be SMSed and used by two separate people in the process so as to comply with prescribed management rule 27? Well, I think one has to start with the question is, what is it? Is an EFT? Is it in fact the signature of a document that binds the body corporate as described in PMR 27? No, I don't think it is. When writing a check, for example, one is entering into a contract with one's bank. One is saying, here, please, I'm giving you a binding instruction. Um, and when you get this piece of paper and when you check that we've got enough money, please make a payment. Uh, whereas, on the other hand, the making of an EFT payment isn't a contract. It's not telling somebody else to do something. It's the actual making of the payment. And I think it's more similar to a trustee taking money out of the body corporate safe and actually handing it over to a creditor. So I think that the EFT process is not hit by prescribed management rule 27 and schemes are not obliged to get two trustees or one trustee and the managing agent to participate in the process of making such payments. But I do want to mention that modern software, modern management software can be set up so as to arrange for a designated trustee to authorize body corporate payments before they are released by the managing agent. It's still sensible to look at the question of the four eyes principle and perhaps to apply it, but it's not, I don't think, necessary under PMR 27, as sensible as it may be. Thank you for joining me in this Padded Club video tutorial. If you have any questions, let's deal with them in the discussion forum.